How's it going, internets? I hope you're having a lovely day. It's that time again, time to get into some animation, time to get creative, time to get that imagination all revved up. It's time to get inspired, and today's inspiration comes from Greg Staples. If you're not familiar with his work, check right over here. Um, he is a great comic book artist, and I believe he's done some writing as well. An illustrator and concept designer and artist. He's worked with uh, Blizzard and Magic the Gathering and a bunch of work on Judge Dredd as well. And if you haven't seen his work, I'll leave through a couple of... Uh, great images that I found of his. Uh, I really loved uh, his imagination and the way that he blends um, the realism with uh, the imaginary as well. This was a totally um, great image. I thought the composition is really nice. You've got uh, the dark trees out here that help shape uh, the main focus point of the image. And you've got that nice bit of line of action throughout the image as well. It's really weight on here, anatomy is really great, and it's a really creative piece as well, and I love the way that he, he did the kind of hair, or the, where the vines kind of weave in and out, it's really cool, and then there's a different kind of texture, which is like this moss kind of bits that are growing on the shoulders, really interesting piece, um, almost everything that I can find of his, I really love his style, I, I know that he works usually, um, from what I was reading, uh, more traditional methods with actually doing, um, I think it's oil and gouache and stuff on, uh, sorry, my nose is itchy, on real canvas. Um, but definitely check him out. I will throw some links in the description below uh, to see his amazing stuff. And uh, I did find one quote that I wanted to share with you guys from him as well. And that's whenever I've thought I'm getting to the top, I've always told myself I'm nowhere near because the moment you lose that ambition, you're no longer striving for perfection, and if you're not striving for perfection, what's the point? And this kind of goes back to something that uh, we've seen throughout a couple of um, different artists talk about, and that's the uh, complacency to, to never get um, to at rest kind of with your work and get satisfied with where you're at. If you do that, you're dead. Like, that's it. Always need to be finding something to push further, whether it's your ideas or your understanding or your fundamentals or your experimentation or, or whatever it is. You have to keep pushing and growing and trying to uh, get to that next level. Uh, so I think that's a great goal to have to uh, remember to not get complacent with your work. I mean, look and talk realistically about you know the things that you struggle with or the things that you're good at, and uh, try and push. In those areas where you know you're not so strong so you can keep boosting up your work so that being said let's go ahead and get into some animation this is kind of a funky rig it's uh, called an ibis rig that's a free rig you can grab over at creative crash as always there will be a link in the description below if you guys want to try this out um, if you're not familiar with what we do here usually every day um always every day Thanks for watching. Um, what we're going to be doing is we give ourselves 48 frames around there, sometimes a little less, sometimes a little more, depending on the idea. And I go off and I find a different rig that's a new rig, it's a free rig that I've never used before. It's a free resource for you guys to play around with. It gives me some challenges because i got to figure out how the rig works and figure out what like approach I'm going to use and what kind of ideas come with that. And a little bit of kind of over the shoulder hang out with me while I animate. A little bit of instruction throughout the way or kind of guidance as I or talking about my thought process as I'm working through it and uh, hopefully the main goal of these is to um, help you guys feel like you're not alone in your creative world every day that you have a buddy going along with those successes those failures all that stuff right there with you hopefully giving you some encouragement and maybe some inspiration and that uh, you guys take what we're doing here or what you learned or what you got uh, thinking about while we were doing this and you go off and create your own stuff and if you do definitely share it back so I can uh, give you that encouragement and those thumbs up and that uh, those comments or whatever it is that you guys are looking for just let me know because I really want to encourage you guys to go off and create your own unique worlds that uh, you blend in with your own personality and uh, help promote you guys as well so that being said let's go ahead and get in here um, so what I was thinking with this one was something that I haven't really done before but for some reason it uh was in my head that that's what I should do for this rig. I was just thinking, let's try doing a pull up.
over here. Make a small one. And we'll rotate it. I'll just have me doing a couple of little pull-ups. I think that'll be kind of fun to do. Something a little bit different than we haven't really done on there. And something that I think, I don't know, this guy seems like he'd be some guy who, you know, just works out. Or girl. I don't even know. What kind of a, wait, do you think there's a guy or a girl? Maybe I'll get flagged for inappropriate, but no, I guess a girl. Uh, let's go ahead and move that forward a little bit more. And let's start creating our first initial pose. to uh, get our constraints in so we can constrain the hands to that pull there. And then if we do a pull up, we go this way or go on this way. But don't be afraid to shoot video reference uh, of yourself doing stuff or to look crazy on camera and then watch yourself do it uh, so you can kind of get a, a blend and maybe you'll come up with different ideas when you're doing that. But I always encourage you guys to look silly on camera so that you can come up with different ideas and have fun while you're doing this stuff don't be afraid to do that and unlike me uh, you probably won't have to have other people in the world see you when you do weird stuff on camera so there you go that's always got that benefit itself You just see how that wrist is getting distorted, we might not be able to get that kind of thing. So uh, we'll just work with what we have here and instead of doing it that way, we'll go this way because we can still do it. Change this way. Usually this is a little more natural, but we can still do it this way. Yeah, that still works. So we'll go ahead and bring that. Just got to be careful. I hope that there's um, an elbow. doesn't appear that there's an elbow controller. I'm just going to put a damper on us doing this because this is not... A lot of times we can work through kind of a pose like this, but that's not going to look good. So let's go ahead and try a different idea than for this guy. And that's okay. Don't get too attached to your ideas that you can't get rid of them. some sort of just in case I feel like work out that maybe a little bit is kind of so hold on one second again okay I just reopened the uh, file here from scratch to make sure I 
don't forget to save multiple versions and save often. I always talk about that. Wow, it's really helpful to save often. Now let's revert back to an earlier version of your file. So let's try and see if we can do a push up here. And most times I won't ever pause the recording unless there's just something that I it's just going to be completely boring. Because I want you guys to see the good, the bad, and everything that goes along with it. I think that that's important. Sometimes if you hit your zero, it'll actually pop it on the ground, but not in this case, so that's okay. Alright, and one thing we're going to have to kind of be wary of is how this head controller works, because it's not really set up the same way that I would think it would be. Overall, this is going to lend to a little bit better looking animation, hopefully. So, another idea, I just didn't think this rig wasn't uh, built to do that. So, let's go ahead and save our file again. And again, we are using Autodesk Maya 2014 for this uh, exercise, this hangout time with you guys today. And let's go ahead and give ourselves 48 frames. And let's go ahead and get started here. So, let's grab everything we've got to make sure we just have our Curves, nerve surfaces, and polygons selected. Go from zero and we'll set our first key. And let's do this up to that house. So I'll go ahead and bring in Daniel. And again, we're just kind of going to rough in our time here. Put it in our 24. Daniel on 36. And I'm going to go ahead and tilt it. a little bit higher. Go down, overshoot it a little bit more. Go up a little bit higher again. And then overshoot it a little bit more up. And then back at the roots. Let's go to zero. Okay, it already feels a little bit better, but let's make sure we clean that up. Make sure it's not super there's still full and arc and flowery flaring off when you're not here. And I'm okay having like one big one and one little one, but we were getting some intersection there, so we gotta be careful about that. So let's go ahead and see. Now we don't want to overshoot too far like that, so let's go ahead and just take everything and we'll pull it down. This might be a little too high here, so let's go ahead and scale that back a little bit. 
too high, but it's starting to feel a little better. that we ripped off. We don't really want that, so let's go ahead and minimize that a little bit more. It'd be nice if we had some shoulder control strings here, but that's okay. The elbows kind of snap a little bit here, so let's add a little bit more here so they don't really pop in there. Too much rotate back because it doesn't feel like the feet are really planted, and we need to make those feet feel planted on the ground. Not like they're sliding around in there, so let's minimize that a little bit. One thing we could try to do with those kind of hits here 12 it actually translates in the Z a little bit forward. That would give a little bit of over the top. Just want a little bit of groove in those feet. And it's probably the rotate backs that actually I'm seeing as that, so let's try and do harder than that. too much. Let's tone that down a little bit. Just don't like how the feet kind of uh, change shape a little bit here. Just the deform, you can see like they kind of inflate a little bit there and then deflate there. It's because of the rotation right there. It's more of a polish note with like something that's sticking out to me right now. Still don't like how the elbows lock there either, 
Oops, let's go to the transit line. Let's just pull it down a little bit. I can't get the silver by the use of that. are doing a little bit or over exaggerating it. It's way too much, so let's minimize that. A whole lot, so I'll try to loosen up that chest a little bit more. to be Slipping we normally wouldn't do, but we want a little bit of that just so it doesn't let the pixel lock in the one spot. Because if you watch a lot of cycles, like animation cycles for like video games and stuff, a lot of times they'll have the feet just just smack dab planted down for when they're doing their little like idle animations or stuff. Um, but I always felt like, uh, and there's this thing, and I've kind of talked about it before, um, but like in, in uh, hand drawn animation, if I'm drawing one frame here, I'm drawing that a, a copy of that second, that same frame, just I'm holding it for two frames. So the first frame, drawing it, second frame, drawing it again. There's going to be some variation um, just between the line width and weight and a little bit of grit in the pencil line and all that stuff. Even if I try to make them exactly as close as I can, there's going to be some, some variation. But in 3D animation, if I hold for a frame, I move that frame and I copy it, it's the exact same pixel for pixel thing, albeit uh, lighting or the camera move or something uh, that's going to change, but if it's just a fixed camera and the lighting's fixed and everything, it's going to 
give you that exact same thing. So sometimes I try to add a little bit of slips and stuff, and not because I want the movement to feel really like it's a slip, but if you do it just slightly enough, it feels like there's a little bit of, you know, even if I'm pushing my hand here, if I'm moving a little bit, you can see there's some micro movements in my hand that aren't just fixed here doing a push-up here. There's some slight micro movements in there while my hand's still basically holding that same um, 3D space, really. So I try to put a little bit of that in. And if you do it too much, it doesn't feel very believable. Like this foot right here feels better than this one. So obviously there's a little too much slip there, so let's go ahead and minimize that. So like I said, sometimes I uh, discuss kind of the thought process of why choose different things over and a lot of times with um, finding different rigs that we use sometimes my thought process is this is not working with this rig so I just got to try and make it work um, and, I, and I felt like probably for the last week or so that I've not been putting up videos the way that I want flat it's not great but at least I can kind of believe that that's the way a thumb would move I do not believe that a thumb would flatten out that way so do we just hide the thumb in there or do we let's flatten our fingers a little bit better noticeably like if I was watching something and I saw that I would be like that is a bad thumb pose I just don't personally <laughs> that's one thing so again this is belief it's not great but it's believable that a thumb could be in that position it is not believable that a thumb would be in that wonky position that it was before so that's kind of a strange thing sometimes I get kind of anomalies in how these rigs were set up so uh, let's go ahead and create a uh, polygon for this critique diff. Oh, it's right now we're probably intersecting stuff. Mm -hmm. Alright. Yeah. Like I said, I'd rather see no thumb than see that janked up thumb that was there before. So let's go ahead and hide this. And it looks like we might need to raise both of those. So we gotta kinda use what we got here. Don't have a spread, don't have any kind of variation there, so we'll just have to use what we got. And again, I realize that a thumb is intersecting through there, but I think that that's a less distracting choice to me than um, seeing that uh, thumb curl up and, and bend backwards. Uh, so let's get a look at it now. elbow controllers either or it can get in and really tweak that so let's go ahead and um, let's try and add a little bit of rotate to the Y here a little bit. So maybe on the first one it kind of favors that shoulder and the second one kind of favors this one just a little bit. Just to, I mean we're doing 3D animation so we don't want to really work on just, you know, the side planes. We want to do a little bit in the 3D space here. Same thing, we'll go here and we'll go ahead and try to offset it a little bit just so we get a little bit of twist in the body here. And again, it's not something you really even want to see, you just kind of feel that the body's not just working on even if we shoot from kind of a side view. Let's see here. 
It's just that I see how they, they did it. It feels like there's no sort of bone structure in there with the way that it's bent. But that's okay. Otherwise, I think it's an interesting um, aesthetic for a rib. It's kind of interesting. So we loosen up those feet a little bit more. Let's see. Let's do a little less of it. And let's have it extend. And just a little hint of it here. Let's see it out here. This one, and then we'll push it uh, forward a frame. This one, and we'll uh, push the extra leg frame. It's just the toe control. I think I need to move something else here. Uh, toe wiggle, and then we'll drag it back a frame. Just so we're not hitting the back side of it. And this one, toe wiggle, and we'll push it uh, forward a frame here. Just so we loosen up those toes a little bit. Overall, kind of a shorter one today, but I think that turned out okay. I would have liked to have been able to do that pull-up, but I just feel like overall, um, probably wouldn't have liked how that turned out because of those elbows and everything, and, and the way those arms are. There's a lot of weight and stuff that went down. Actually, let's try and do a little bit of, of uh, raising the fingers, just because they're don't need a lot of that, but just so there's some movement in those fingers. That's probably going to be even more than I want, just a teeny bit. And then let's take the index and we'll push it forward a frame, and the pinky, and we'll drag it back a frame so there's some variation in our timing a little bit there. There we go. Like I said, just a little bit of loosening up so that there is some kind of movement in those fingers, and we don't have a lot to work with with our finger controllers, but at least that gives us some Grab everything and we'll delay it a 
sexual variation from the beginning of the loop and the end of the loop, so it's not the same exact a different background color, so sign a new material, let's put a Lambert on it, and um, let's see, let's go to uh, yellow, let's do something in that range, kind of opposite on the color wheel, and see this is what I usually do, is kind of like, there's the opposite, he's kind of got a yellow tone. Take a look back at where we started. We're looking at the wonderful art of Greg Staples. He said, whenever I've ever thought I'm getting to the top, I've always told myself I'm nowhere near. Because the moment you lose that ambition, you're no longer striving for perfection. And if you're not striving for perfection, what's the point? And I think to, to one extent, though, I don't, I don't like things that are perfect. I like things that are a little off, personally. But I think that striving for the best that you can do and to get better is really important. Um, and to have that ambition and to never lose sight of where you want to be and where you want to go with your work. And to always be trying new mediums, trying new formats, trying just different ways of approaching your work too so that it doesn't get dull for you, so that you don't lose your inspiration, so that you don't get bored of what you're doing. Just mix it up and continue to push yourself. So that being said, thanks again for watching. You guys are awesome. Thanks for all the likes and subscribes. I love you guys lots. Um, if you do end up doing an animation with this rig, definitely share it back so I can see all the wonderful stuff. And that goes for any medium you guys are using. Whatever you're creating, I want to see it. I want to encourage you. I want to inspire you. You guys are amazing. I know you can do it. Keep believing in yourself. And that being said, we'll see you for some more animation tomorrow.